Super Mario 64 is an absolute classic. The worlds, gameplay, and controls are all done really well, and the game has aged well, but some aspects are very dated by today's standards. So does the game hold up today? Let's find out. Released on June 23, 1996 in Japan, and September 29, 1996 in the West, Mario 64 received some of the highest praise of all Nintendo 64 games. The game was met with loads of high 9s and 10s in reviews. At the time, this was well deserved, but today, the game is an 8 at best. Why is that? Well, I think that some aspects are not so great, usually due to console limitations for the time. As one final note, I played the game on the Switch's 3D All-Stars release, and the Wii Virtual Console version, so I can't say anything about the Nintendo 64 or its controller. Starting with the most important part, the gameplay, the game is surprisingly solid. Some classic glitches, such as the backwards long jump, also known as the BLJ, or the Black Room of Death, achieved with the BLJ, are a ton of fun to mess around with. Mario's move list is expansive, and introduced staples such as the backflip, wall jump, dive, and long jump. The physics are well done, but cracks in the system lead to things like the BLJ. Mario is so much fun to control, and my favorite levels are the platforming ones, such as the Bowser levels. Sure, regular levels can be fun, but I usually replay something like Tick Tock Clock. Back to Mario, he can be frustrating at times. Turning around is hit or miss. Sometimes he U-turns, and other times he snaps in the opposite direction. Overall, the controls are really good in this game, but the inconsistency has killed me one too many times. The levels are fun and well designed. The game introduced open-ended levels to the series. These would be used for two more games, those being Sunshine and Odyssey. Galaxy and Galaxy 2 would be semi-free, but still linear. <laughs> 3D World and Land would continue to be more like a 3D version of a standard Mario game. 3D exploratory environments are a treat to play, and the ability to get multiple stars in any mission is really cool. The problem is that getting a star kicks you out of the level. But thankfully, Mario Odyssey fixed this. <laughs> Back to Mario 64, the stars are fun, but some names are just not helpful. Take Womp's Fortress, Blast Away the Wall Star. Which one? The solution to this mission is to get in a cannon and shoot yourself into a corner of a wall, which then moves the star to where you would land. That's ridiculous! Who would find that? Sure, there isn't much of this, but there are a few levels that just cannot seem to get it right with the names. As I already stated, the linear levels here might be even more fun. As the movement feels so smooth and is possibly the best feeling Nintendo 64 game. These levels are the Bowser Courses, Tic Tac Clock, and Rainbow Ride. The worst of these is easily Rainbow Ride, as it's really slow. My absolute favorite levels are the Bowser Courses, though, specifically the last one. It just feels so climactic. It takes a good while to do, and it's really easy to sink your teeth into. It's just too bad that there wasn't more of these in the game. But the music? The music goes hard. Classics like Bomb on Battlefield and The Slider are fun and bubbly, Dire Dire Docs is relaxing and soothing, and the Bowser Battle music, or Koopa's theme, is really tense but fun to listen to. One of my favorite memories I made in this game is swimming around in Dire Dire Docs while Dire Dire Docs played. Confused yet? That moment was hampered just a little by my dad playing Fortnite loudly during that moment, but I've learned to block out gunshots, which is useful if you go to an American school. Sorry, bad joke. I really like Lethal Lava Land. Not the level, but the musical track. It's slow. But when it's used in shifting sandland, it feels fitting. Piranha Plant Lullaby is a really nice track. It can be heard when sneaking up on a sleeping piranha plant. The piano rendition found in Mario 3D All Stars is so good, it alone would justify purchase of the game. Seriously, it sounds so good. And that's true of all the tracks in this game. I love this soundtrack to death, and it is easily Koji Kondo's best work. So, is the game good by today's standards? It certainly was then. And today, it still holds up. Sure, I have my gripes, but the game is too good not to be played by everyone at least once. So if you can, play this game.